of the major Linux distros, almost all of them have debug packages. These are packages that are shipped with the debug symbols enabled, more on what that means in just a moment. On Debian, for example, you download a package marked as dash dbg. So let's say alacrity dash dbg. But one distro stood out not having these, Arch Linux. But soon, that is going to be changing. If you want to read all this for yourself, it'll be linked down below, and I really recommend you go and do so. But before we get into this, let's talk about what debug symbols are and why you should even care, because I feel like that's a pretty good place to start. So most of the applications you run on your system are compiled. Sure, you have some things written in, say, Bash, your Bash scripts, you have Python, you'll have Perl, you have Ruby, JavaScript, things like that. But most of the applications you have are written in languages like C, C++, Rust, Go, maybe Java? I hope not, but maybe Java. And when you compile an application, the resulting binary, as we call them, isn't the same as the source code of the application. It is something derived from that source code, but it's in a form that is not really human readable, but it is much more readable by the computer. So theoretically, if you have a bit of code that is compiled and a bit of code that is interpreted, the compiled code should run faster. Not the case every single time, but it's a general good rule of thumb. But compiled code does have a problem. What if the application crashes? So if you've seen a Python application crash, you've without a doubt seen a stack trace. Basically, it's a thing saying, oh, this function was called, this function was called, this function was called, and then ultimately it crashed at this location. This is incredibly useful information if you're trying to debug an application. If you send in a GitHub issue, you post the stack trace, then someone can look at that and be like, oh, oh, I'm dumb, I missed this thing, this is the case where this can happen, and can track it down considerably easier. But what about in a compiled application? So let's make something crash then and just see what happens. Now, it doesn't really matter what this one-liner actually does, all that's important is it causes a seg fault. Now, the result looks like this. Now, this isn't very useful. It is a stack trace, but what are you going to do with this? So... These right here are basically pointers to location in the binary file of what was actually run. But how do you map this to something in your source code? Because it's all well and good that we know that this happened in the binary, but without going and tracking down every single last line of the binary and like manually mapping it, what do we actually do? And that is where debug symbols come in. That is what lets us do this mapping without having to do everything manually. So this is an example, this time having GDB open, but still running ZSTD. GDB is the GNU debugger, basically giving you a better look at what's actually happening. Once again, though, without the debug symbols, you get these pointers locations in the binary and not really any indication of what's actually being run. With the debug symbols, though, all of a sudden we know, oh, this is the files where stuff is being run, this is the functions that's being run, this is the data being sent in, and we can start to see what is actually happening. Now, this is probably meaningless to someone who doesn't work on this code base or has no idea about how C code is structured, and that's perfectly fine. It's the way it should be. But if you are a developer, this information is incredibly useful. Okay, now I can predict exactly what you're gonna say. Debug symbols seem incredibly useful. Why not just have them always enabled? It'll make it much, much easier for users to actually report bugs. And yeah, that's a great question and a great point. They do have two pretty big downsides though. One of those is much larger binaries and by extension, longer compile times. At the scale of individual users, the extra binary size isn't really that big of a deal. Let's say if you have a desktop environment and a couple of other big packages, maybe you would lose like 15, 20 gigabytes of your entire storage space if you have like a terabyte of storage, which isn't that big of a deal. Maybe it is for some users, but for most that's gonna be fine. But what about at the scale of actually distributing packages and having to compile them? So if you have a repo that has like 
a thousand, two thousand, three thousand packages, making everything a debug package when some of them are going to go up by multiple gigabytes in space may not be viable, especially when your entire distro is funded by donations. As of the recording of this video, the debug packages on Arch Linux are not yet available inside of a public repo. One of the reasons is because of the concerns around repo size, but ultimately the goal is to make them available on the public mirrors. Whether it's going to be every mirror is sort of up to those individual mirrors, but it is going to be available on the mirrors. Basically, you're going to be able to add it into Pac-Man like you can with the existing repos like Community, Multilib, things like that. Basically, you'll be able to add it into your Pac-Man config and just download it like anything else. However, that does not mean that right now you are not able to actually make use of debug symbols. So Arch Linux actually has a debug infod service, which basically offers remote debugging symbols. So with your existing binaries, it can effectively fill in the gaps that you don't have in the compiled version. If you want to see more information about this, I recommend checking out the wiki page on debug infod and also going and checking out the dashboard but this isn't going to be supporting every single package available. There is a package list, and right now, the list is quite short. Like, you have some QT stuff in here. I'll zoom in a bit. You have a bit of... You have i3 gaps. I don't know why i3 gaps, but the Arch repos are much, much bigger than this. And at this stage, even if they made debug packages for everything in the repos and made those repos public it wouldn't actually work for everything. So <laughs> their initial solution was a hack and it's fully admitted it was a hack. What they were doing to extract the debug symbols was using an awk script. Now this awk script worked fine for C and C++. Problem is those aren't the only languages that exist and it didn't work for Rust, Go and other things like that. So basically, you were screwed. You could do the C and C++ stuff, but anything else, nothing. Luckily, there is a better solution that has been submitted as a patch now using debug edit, and that actually does work for other languages. But until this solution has been backported to older versions of Pac-Man, it's not going to actually be available for them. Now, even with that being addressed, it's still not certain whether every single package is going to have a debug package. There's some people saying, oh, it should be enabled by default for every single package, and others who think maybe we should only enable it if it is needed by the developer. If the developer doesn't really care about the stack trace and is just going to wing it, well, there's no point actually enabling the debug package if they're not going to use it. At this stage, I can't say exactly how it's going to pan out, but the first step is to work on the core packages and then spread out from there. The core packages are ones that definitely will benefit from these debug packages, but it's unclear whether everything in the community packages will be exactly the same. One thing I should have made clear earlier is it's not like right now you can't already make use of debug symbols for literally any application you want, even if it's not one available in the Arch repos, all that's being done with these packages is recompiling them, but enabling the debug symbols. So if you want to go and compile the application yourself, you can enable them. If you want to go and write a package build and make it integrate with the Arch build system, you can actually have it be a package on your Arch system managed by Pac-Man. It's just a package that you manage yourself. And if you want to make use of these debug symbols, I will leave a link to the Arch wiki guide on how to do debugging in the description down below. Keep in mind, a lot of the stuff in this article is fairly technical and if you don't have experience as a developer it might go over your head also this article admittedly does need a bit of a rewrite but it is at least a good first step so even though debug symbols aren't going to be beneficial to everyone on arch directly it is going to be incredibly useful to those people who actually do report bugs and useful to those developers who actually want to see you know good bug reports with information that they can actually work on. And hopefully that improves the state of software we have, but I can't really see how it's going to go. So that'll be it for me. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you're not using Arch, do you already make use of the bug packages? And if you do use Arch, hey, 
is this something you're actually excited for? And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to go and support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Stanley Barrow Pay, link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a Tea, a gaming channel called Brewery Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. So, I'm out. <laughs>